Hello chess fans, today I want to introduce you to a very dangerous attacking opening, and that is the Kali Zukator opening. So it starts off with d4, and there's a various replies that I'll be looking over in the next few weeks, but today we're going to look at the d5 responses. So here in this position you're going to go knight f3 and knight f6 and eat. And at first it looks pretty passive, but as we're going to see it's very dangerous. And today I'm basically going to be looking at a game between Fabiano Caruana and Aryan Tari. And this game happened actually this year, just around six or seven months ago. So here white has a black has a few setups that we're going to be covering. So bishop f5 is a move and c5 is a move. C5 generally transposes to what happened in the game. But here we saw e6. And now we're going to basically see what our main setup is going to be. So we're going to look for a bishop on d3, a b3 bishop fianchetto and a knight on d2. And at first it doesn't look to make too much sense. What's the bishop doing? But you're going to see the latent potential of the bishop in this opening. So bishop d3, c5, b3, knight c6. All these moves look pretty natural according to our setup. And black's making pretty reasonable moves too. Knight bd, or castles. Uh, bishop d6, bishop b2, castles, knight bd2, and b6. So here black's basically like, okay, my bishop is trapped along this diagonal. Let's try to get out on this diagonal, which makes a lot of sense. And here we see our Rubenstein knight, knight e5. Notice that basically white, black ever taking this is not so much of a problem. For example, if knight b7, we always have ideas of f4 and like queen h5 and some things like this. And we'll have a very nice attacking position. So this would be a bad option for black. So instead they went bishop b7 and notice that white is Caruana here, f4 and rook c8. So this is all pretty much the best line. Now here, what black is basically threatening is to go takes, takes and knight b4. And we can't move our bishop because if we go like bishop e2, we'd lose c2 because now the rook would attack it. So we have to defend that somehow. So here Caruana plays a3 and here we see knight e7. And in this position, you have a few different type of moves you can play. So now obviously we want to connect rooks. So we can, I can either move the queen to e2 or f3. Now f3 is a little bit more aggressive and that's why Caruana decided to play. And here, Aryantari played rook c7, which as you can see by the question mark is a mistake. But rook c7 looks to be a very strange move. Why was rook c7 played? Okay, to think about why rook c7 was played, we want to play the c4 move. And why do we want to play the c4 move? Because white is obviously attacking on the king side, so we want to attack on the queen side and our rook would defend this. What happens if we play c4? Try to calculate this in your head. B takes, D takes, and the bishop would be hanging at the end of that line. So, Arya and Tari decides to go rook c7, threatening c4. And here Caruana goes queen h3. But I wanted to look at a few different lines, because obviously rook c7 is not a very good move. It doesn't really make sense, it blocks the bishop, and it doesn't advance your plans on the queen side. So what are some more reasonable moves here? So it seems like c takes would be a very good option. And after e takes, there's this move knight f5. And when I was looking at this position, I was originally thinking that, okay, the most natural thing to do here is to play g4 to kick away the knight. But here, after knight h4, queen h3, they have this nice equalizing move, knight e4. And here, actually, black is slightly better because their knight on e4 is very strong and we might be a little bit overcommitted. So, how do we prevent the knight from coming to e4? Maybe natural, we go rook e1. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, but then can't they still go knight e4? Because after takes takes if we take with the bishop they can take on c2 because our bishop's pinned notice that if takes we can take on c2 because our bishop can't take back because we lose our queen and if we take here we lose our bishop so are we in trouble and after further research i came up with a novelty the move incredible move rook takes e4 at first it looks crazy isn't that just giving up a rook what if they take takes takes natural move g6 c4 Okay, what do they do? Let's try to think of one move. What if they go queen e7? Just connecting the rooks. B4. The two bishops here more than fully compensate for the exchange. And here white is almost winning. So without going too far, far into the line, c5 is going to come at this point, And knight g4 and the dark squares are basically going to kill black. Okay, so that's what happens if rook takes e4. So now we know they can't go knight e4. So what else do they do here? Okay, g4 is the threat. Maybe they prevent g4? What if they go for the move h5? Here we can go queen h5, threatening the knight, and the knight will have to move, and they'll make way for the pawn. So what if they play a very sneaky move? Bishop e7, what's the idea? They used to go knight d6 and knight e4. Makes a lot of sense. Now we can go g4, right? Because after knight h4, here, attacking the knight, if, you, if you're wondering why knight can't go to g6, f5 would just win the game there. So knight e4 now. 
hmm, seems like we have a very similar position. What if we take here? And after takes, we can't take with a bishop because they take, take, and then take here. We take with the rook. Incredibly enough, this position is again good for white. If takes, takes. The knight is offside. Knight still can't go to g6 because we have this move f5. Very pleasant position. Okay, maybe not f5 right away. Maybe king h1. But again, a very pleasant position. So I, looking at all these ideas, it makes a lot of sense. So what are they to do in this position? It doesn't seem very easy. So that was touted as basically the best line for black here. Okay. So maybe opening the c-file is not that good because the rook covers the pawn, the knight on e4. What if we go knight a5 right away? Here again we have g4, knight h4, and we have queen h3, knight e4, and doesn't it look pretty similar? But in this case, maybe we just defend and we slowly build up our attack. Position is roundabout even. So that might be a good option for black players. But instead of that, we saw rook c7. Now, I'm going to prove why this is a mistake. Caruana is going to prove, sorry. So here, queen h3. And here, black has to continue with their counterplay somehow. If they go with this same, they can't go with knight f5 anymore because now we can just win the pawn. So what are they really to do? Now, here, they probably have to continue with c4 as a pawn sacrifice. After b takes, takes here, knight takes would pretty much be a good position for white. So they'd have to go knight e4. And yes, they've sacked the pawn. This is pretty hard to do. It's not obvious to see what kind of compensation white black has here, but I guess we have two backwards pawns. So instead of that, I think Tari played a much more natural human move, b5, looking to get counterplay. If we take here, after takes, takes, simple enough, after takes, takes, something like knight g6, there's no, sorry, not knight g6, we have rook takes c2, and then knight g6, right after the event with bishop c1. So, yeah, they would win a pawn. So obviously we can't do that. So what are we supposed to do? Here Karana played D takes. And why do we say D takes now? Because they no longer have B takes C5. So here Bishop takes C5. And Tari probably thought he was doing well here. And before I show you that. Or sorry. Uh, before I show you that. Maybe a better move was C takes D4 here. And if we take with the pawn. Knight E4 is giving us trouble. Because we no longer can sack our rook. So what are we supposed to do? It's very interesting. Knight df3. Another great move. Now, why don't they just take an extra pawn? Knight g4, attacking the defender. There's no way to defend. Okay. What if instead I go knight f5? Here, g4. Okay, you're just giving me a free pawn. Let's take it. Okay, what did white do here? Bishop takes d4. Giving up an exchange too, giving up one, two pawns and an exchange so far. Okay, so let's take it. And now here, white to move. Brilliant move. The only move that keep white in the game. Knight c6, triple exclamation mark. Hanging twice. If they take it either way, bishop takes f6, wins the queen. Because if queen takes here, checkmate. So there's a lot of dangers in this position, even if black plays the most accurate continuations. But instead we saw b5. We saw b5, which makes the position all the more easy for the black pieces. Here after c takes d4. Tari thought he was out of the woods after here. And here maybe more accurate is the move b4. And after bishop b6, now knight c6. Because the bishop is a little bit more offside on b6. But okay, you can't blame. Caruana for playing the brilliant move. Knight c6. Absolutely beautiful move. So, okay, yes, the bishop was worst place. So, now here, it's a little bit different though, because black is not immediately losing. After rook takes c6, bishop takes h6. Black can still defend themselves. They notice they don't want to really defend themselves like this, because after something like b4, bishop, wherever, eventually queen h6 is going to come and it's going to be devastating. For example, if queen f6 right away, they have knight f5. So maybe just prepare with king h1, g4, and you should be good at some point to win the game. So instead, Tari went for h6. Very reasonable move. Now, how do we in increase the pressure? Okay, queen g4. If knight here, we can just take it, and we can also take the queen. <laughs> so here we went g6. Now, what's more natural? And going back, we provoke the weakness. Provoke more weaknesses. h5, 
d4. And here, Tari kind of makes the final mistake. It's very hard to say why this move is a mistake. Bishop b6 is the best move. You need to have the ability to give this check at some point. Bishop d6 is maybe the nail in the coffin. After queen h4, this plan is nearly unstoppable. Here he went rook e8. Queen g5, sneaking in. Queen b6 is also another nail in the coffin. What if they continue with here? What's the plan? Queen h8. And what was the idea of bringing the h-pawn forward? So that h8 would be made. Usually they'd have knight f5 covering this mate. And we just have to go back. It's a draw maybe. Maybe they even have bishop e7. They're winning. But by provoking h5, we were able to get this other mate with queen h8. Pawn was previously on h7. Queen b6 here. After queen h6, the game was over. What a brilliant game by Fabiano Caruana to show why this Kali Zukatort opening is extremely dangerous. So guys, I've showed you a lot of lines here. And it's against one of the main setups of black, which is this sort of setup with their Fianchetto. This is what is going to happen in around probably 50% of your games with this opening. Now in further weeks, I'm going to have a video on how to deal with maybe the King's India defense and those sorts of openings. And maybe I'm going to have to video on how to deal with the Queen's Indian type of defenses. So let me leave a like down below if you would like to see those videos. And I will show you basically what are my recommendations. But as for my new D4 recommendation, I am recommending the Kali Zukertort system as an extremely dangerous way to play. Especially in blitz, faster time controls, and at the amateur level. So if you like this video, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.